The next category is, uh, we can just sum it up simply as the aggro three better. Quite honestly, I wouldn't have even made this a category before Black Friday, but until turning on merge, there's certainly just a new category of players that believe they can absolutely dominate the tables by simply three betting a ton of the time and pushing really small, uh, really small ranges uh, of preflop. They also tend to have a really nice strategy post flop to complement their games, which is going to consist of a lot of C betting, stacking off with pretty marginal hands post flop, things like that. Also, we'll say that they have they feel very strongly about their post flop edge in three bet pots, but not in general about their post flop edge. Um, the characteristics of these sort of players, they're going to rely almost solely on the stats of the players. These guys won't be thinking about history very much unless it pertains directly to the three betting and four betting war that's going on. Everything else, um, if you make a big bluff on the river in a single raise pot, if you check call the whole way with middle set um, in a single raise pot, things like that, they're not going to be thinking about all that critically. They're only going to be thinking about uh, the stats of the players. Um, they're going to be very good at adjusting their preflop ranges simply based on your three and four betting wars, but again, won't be adjusting their ranges in single raise pots whatsoever. The only calls they're going to be making out of position are with hands that make the uh, that can make the nuts and they don't have many decisions to make, such as ace X suited and some pocket pairs. I will say that these are also the sort of guys that are going to be squeezing quite a lot with hands you'd be surprised to see. So, um, hands such as ace jack suited, queen king queen suited, sevens through nines. These are the sort of hands that typically, if you're in a three or four way pot and this guy's in the big blind, you'd really expect almost everyone just to be calling there. These are the sort of guys that are going to see all that free money out there and opt to three bet and potentially five bet a lot of those hands as opposed to just calling and trying to see a flop. Um, these guys in general are going to be very aggro when they have the betting lead. And they're also, this is also a really important thing, is that they're going to be they're going to be realizing who's folding to a lot of their three bets immediately and continue to pick on these guys, on those players. So it's very important that you guys want to counteract these guys immediately. Show them a few interesting moves, um, potentially slow play some hands, or potentially make some four bet bluffs early in the session. Even if you fail with one or two of your four bet bluffs early on, I think in general it still will drastically reduce their three bets overall, which is going to be a winning strategy for you, assuming that you're going to be playing with these guys for... Uh, since they're regulars, you know, a couple hours on several tables. Um, finally, they're almost always going to put your three back calling range is very limited. Pretty much an easy way to say they're probably going to put your range as something like eights through tens, ace queen, and then include a few ace jack suits, uh, king jack suits. What this means is it also gives you an opportunity to do a few things. First of all, you can certainly slow play some kings and aces in position and allow them to barrel off. Or secondly, you could be calling with a certain part of the deck, such as making some lighter calls like 7-6 six suited, 6-5 six suited. Um, and you can call with those. And at the same time, you can represent the uh, the hands that you should have when the board comes, queen, nine, six, or something like that. Okay. So how do we, how do we exploit this sort of guy? First of all, like I, I just talked about here, is that we need to call a wider range in three bout three bed pots, particularly deep, because deep they're going to be really unsure what to do about um, on, once they get to the turn you call to raise the flop. Uh, we definitely should be slowing, slow playing some hands against these players. Um, one thing that's interesting is once we classify these guys as being much more aggressive, and two of the four categories are very aggressive, um, I think that players have sort of lost the art, and I would say that I definitely fall in this category, is I think I do need to slow play more hands in general, because players have become so much more aggressive. Most importantly in how to exploit them is don't go into their strength. If you know a guy that simply, he's three betting 18% of the time from the small blind, I know a lot of, I've, I've had coaches in the past that have advised me that I need to combat this by extending my range completely um, to getting in hands like sixes and sevens and ace jack suited preflop. I could not disagree with that more. You do not want to play into their strengths. What I like to do is play into my strengths, so I'm going to be calling in position quite a lot more with these sort of guys than I would be against other players, and then using my post-slop abilities. Say against most players that I'd be calling pocket nines in position to three bets um, cut off versus small blind. Typical play is just a call. I'd say I'd probably call three out of four times in that situation.